Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. I've said before how dismayed I was to learn that no, being a quack didn't get you arrested in the pre-legalization days any more than being a quack gets your clinic shut down in the safe and legal days. And um, one of those I can highlight today is Dr. Emil Gleitzman. He had a long history of criminal abortion starting in 1927 when he was implicated in the abortion death of 22-year-old Lucille Van Eiderstein. He was indicted for felony murder in her death, but for some reason I don't know, the case never went to fruition. Then he was prosecuted and acquitted in the December 12, 1930 death of Jeanette Rader. After his acquittal and Jeanette's death, he was indicted in 1931 for the death of 25-year-old Matilda Cornelius. And then Gleitzman was convicted three times on a single charge of manslaughter by abortion for the 1933 death of Mary Colbert, but each time his lawyer got a reversal and the prosecution eventually gave up. Then on June 8, 1934, 26-year-old Elsie Qual died and a coroner's jury recommended that Gleitzman be held over to a grand jury. Elsie's husband Paul testified that when he'd gone to Gleitzman's office to look into his wife's death, he had encountered Gleitzman's attorney, William McKinley. Coverage is very vague, but it appears that McKinley was trying to discourage Paul from reporting the abortion to the authorities. And during the inquest into Elsie's death, another person accused Gleitzman in another abortion death. It doesn't seem like anything came of Elsie's death or the one that Mrs. Donnie accused him of. And he got in trouble again in 1937 for the death of Phyllis Brown. Um, Eventually, though, that death was attributed to a Dr. C. Harold Edmonds. I have not yet been able to find out how Gleitzman was involved. He wasn't held accountable for any of his crimes until he was sentenced to 14 years for the December 10th, 1941 death of Mario O'Malley. So we've got 1927, 1930, 1931, 1933, 1935, uh, a mystery death that we're not sure when that took place. We'll skip the 1937 death of Phyllis Brown because another doctor was um, eventually implicated, but then Marie O'Malley. So that's seven abortion deaths, one doctor, seven deaths till this fi guy finally went to prison.